Hello, everyone. I'm Marco Morales from the product team at edX. And let's get started. Today's plan is to articulate a few teaching and learning focused platform themes and directions that we're currently exploring for the OpenEx platform. We'll share three themes to represent learner facing topics and three other educator facing themes as well. Though in practice, many of these will overlap um, depending on what we're looking at in the platform. After sharing a summary for each theme, I'll describe a few related projects from the latest named release, as well as some projects that are actively in development in this theme. Additionally, each theme will list out a few projects as potential future OpenNX collaborations and contribution areas. These are not necessarily areas that are on any given roadmap, but they're aligned to this general theme. So we hope these conversations will further our platform vision, um, helping us build collaboratively the world's uh, leading teaching and learning platform. That's our goal today. For the three learner-focused themes, we will start with the expanded use of in-context tools, building on platform experiences like our in-context discussions experience. Secondly, we'd like to talk about our goal of progressing the mobile applications toward full course and program learning experiences, not dependent on a desktop environment. And looking beyond the core content experiences on OpenEdX, we're interested in further developing the communication and collaboration tools that support learners progressing through learning materials as active members of their course communities. So this in particular is a topic that we expect our plans will evolve as we explore it further in 2021 and beyond. Across the platform, we're looking to provide patterns that easily incorporate secondary tools and support mechanisms where they're most valuable right alongside the core learning experience. We anticipate they, this same pattern could also be extended to educators in support of the core authoring workflows as well. Here we see an example of, of work in progress to build the new in-context discussion sidebar within the learner experience, powered by the new learning microfrontend. Here the discussion is scoped to a specific unit page within a course, simplifying both educator configuration out of the box and learner use of discussions within content learning sequences. The next view shows how these support tools and areas may switch between being expanded or collapsed, allowing learners to immerse themselves in their content learning or seek additional support through these supplemental tools configured by educators specific to that part of the course. Similarly, we anticipate other tools emulating this pattern in the educator experience as well, as previously noted. So in addition to this context-aware sidebar area, there's other context-specific messages or prompts that might also supplement a learner's experience or help to prompt new actions. So these messages may appear directly in line to the content experience, or they may actually provide thoughtful interrupts in between content, providing supporting messaging, supportive messaging, additional detail, or anything else that augments the content. In fact, recent developments around personalized learning schedules and celebratory milestones are actually great examples of these in-context messages and prompts. So with these updates, learners can adjust their own assignment deadlines within self-based courses or share out course milestones with others outside the platform. In development currently is the in-context discussion experience visualized a few slides back, and we're using a similar pattern to explore updated upgrade messaging to the paid enrollment track. Additional tools may also echo this pattern in the future. You can envision updates to our textbook, resources, notes, help and support tools that can present targeted support alongside course content or other key learning experience views. So one example educator analog to this learner experience would include tools in our authoring environment that facilitate educator discussion and feedback about content pages throughout the authoring process. As you consider potential expansions or extensions to the platform, consider whether this is a pattern uh, that might lend itself to your contribution. So where possible shared patterns like these help us move quickly and iterate while keeping a cohesive learner experience. Next up is the goal of working towards fully mobile learning experiences. Today on edX, the majority of learners are cross-device, and this continues to grow organically as a proportion of total learners. From learner interviews, we've identified three key reasons for this mobile shift. For many learners, limited access to internet or laptops may drive their mobile engagement patterns. The offline video storage support available on our mobile apps also supports these learners with limited internet access. For others, the pocket proximity of the mobile app may help to make learning a part of their day-to-day -day routine, and finally, mobile learning also represents the possibility of learning anywhere on the go, 
uh, while commuting or even as kids are uh, watching TV nearby. The value proposition of our mobile application is to provide learners with uninterrupted learning on the device of their choice, leveraging platform-specific tools to further enhance their learning experience. So today, despite these factors that may lead learners to discover or prefer to learn on their mobile devices, several barriers exist to fully completing this experience. So we've seen that requiring a switch back to a desktop environment can lead to learner drop-offs and fewer people completing their course goals. There have been many recent improvements to our mobile applications, including visual progress, personalized learning schedules, and data adjustment tools previously only on the desktop experience. Currently, the team is working on a large shift to enable in-app payments, as well as calendar integrations that take advantage of mobile notifications and calendar tools. Additional improvements the team is considering include other ways to expand access to the mobile experience. Some of these are listed here. So next up, to describe our efforts in the communication and collaboration theme, we'll briefly summarize the community of inquiry research model. So this research model stems from John Dewey's constructivist ideas on how learning takes place in a personal and social context. So proposed in 2000, the, this model is the most widely used framework describing the effectiveness of online learning environments in research today. So the model describes three key components to an effective learning environment, including cognitive presence, which you can think of as a learner's ability to construct personal meaning and value within a learning environment, social presence, which refers to a learner's ability to connect with others and to project their own identity and contribute to the formation of a learner community. And finally, teaching presence, which refers to the engagement with content or instructors directly. This experience in particular will vary depending on the delivery model of a course, but even in self-paced courses, the degree to which course communication and other factors can contribute to a learner's content engagement makes this a really key part of the model. As a way to summarize the many option and investment areas we're considering within this collaboration and communication space, we've highlighted four key areas of investment. Discussions is being rebuilt with a focus on simplified configuration, expanded use of in-context discussion, major improvements to navigation, expanded moderation tools, ways to identify community TAs based on current course engagement metrics. We're also exploring ways to better connect live video streaming experiences into the platform with provider options that we'll cover more in detail when we look at the educator themes next. So next, there are several communication avenues and tools in the platform, spanning instructor course emails, course updates, welcome messages, messaging in context throughout the course content, in particular between sections or different milestones or markers in the course. Simplifying and centralizing these tools for educators will help streamline common communication challenges and limitations in the tools today. So additionally, this is an opportunity to explore how these messages might be delivered to learners based on actual content engagement or their course progress, further enabling learner-paced courses. And finally, building on the current platform's Teams experience, we're working to integrate team-based assignments and are exploring language and location affinity-based teams to help learners connect with like-minded peers. This project list represents many of the exploration areas previously described in those four main areas. Though this is really just a small sample of the potential enhancements in this large topic area. So we're interested in learning more about your thoughts on how to improve these tools as well. So next up are three educator focused themes. So to start, we'll cover the expansion of our authoring tools to go beyond course authoring and enable flexible and remixable authoring of content blocks, all the way up through learning sequences, courses, and programs. We'll then talk briefly about the platform boundaries for LTI integrations at the course, program, and platform level, a standard way to define these app categories with multiple integration options, but a shared way to centralize settings that can help us explore many future integrations using shared patterns. Finally, a reflection on the wide range of courses that the OpenEdX platform supports, spanning MOOCs down to smaller course sizes, and how we believe scalable course operation tools may help bridge gaps that exist when using tools across the spectrum. So to begin our discussion on flexible and remixable authoring, 
It's important to recognize the wide range of learning contexts that are represented in the open edX ecosystem. Today, edX.org focuses our experience on courses, programs, and degrees. Our authoring tools are built around and focus on this course experience. So other open edX instances focus on smaller or micro courses. Others have built their experience around learning sequences, content playlists, or even individual learning blocks. The core authoring experience is built around supporting the structured course learning context represented here in this sort of blue spectrum. Um, what we'd like to do is explore the way that educators can quickly repackage their learning content into other formats, enabling existing content to continue to evolve and improve over time. So currently this challenge is a critical issue in educational technology tools. Often learning content decays in value over time instead of becoming more useful over time. So we hope that we can change this in part by some of the new authoring investments and uh, focus on unstructured authoring content tools. Unstructured authoring tools build on the current content library functionality that the platform already has, as well as the block store content storage engine that we've covered in other talks. So expanding on these tools, we believe will help educators explore new modular authoring methods, help instructional designers build video or problem libraries if they'd like without yet worrying about which courses, learning sequences, or content playlists that eventually might use this content. So another way to visualize this is to use the following concept diagram. So on the left is our existing course authoring environment, currently flex to enable a wide range of courses, sizes, and types. There may be other structured learning environments that may exist in the future. A simplified experience suggests author learning sequences or playlists or what have you. On the right is content authored in our content library format. So currently, content libraries are primarily used as a way to build problem banks that can then be randomly included in your course. So an instructor can randomly assign three problems of a specific type from a given library, helping to randomize the exam content with the goal of supporting credit grade exams and courses. With planned updates to content libraries, educators will also be able to specifically reference library content, helping instructional design teams or video content teams separately author and manage their learning content in libraries for eventual use in one or multiple courses or potentially additional learning contexts. Additionally, course teams will be able to then link their courses to video or problem libraries, helping them track new versions, library updates along the way as they do today for randomized library content. So critically, libraries today let you author individual content blocks, but in the future we want to shift this to help uh, you author entire sections, learning sequences or units all at once in these complex libraries. And then that way these higher order objects, learning sequences um, at a time, for example, could be included in a given course. So as part of this new authoring flexibility, we're also planning to introduce the ability to author content taxonomies. So a content taxonomy is a set of tags that educators can use to add structure to the library content. Courses and libraries could be aligned to taxonomies, and this is a way of expressing some sort of content alignment or relationship. Perhaps your video library can be aligned to your university's physics department learning objectives, or maybe you wanna associate your course content with a national set of standards like the Common Core in the US. Whatever your metadata or structure, Content taxonomies can enable educators to author more complex libraries. <clears throat> In a world where Creative Commons licensed or even open educational resources are available to an author on an open edX instance, they might be able to include library content that matches specific metadata into their course. There's many other potential use cases for this taxonomy data as well beyond educator discovery of additional content. Learners may be able to, in the future, take advantage of this metadata indirectly through improve learner discovery, search, or even personalization in the future. One final area to highlight as part of this effort is that we're building these experiences not only on top of the block store content engine, but also in our new course and library authoring micro frontends to deliver more quickly and to also enable extensions as well. Additionally, as part of this effort, we're expecting to update our video and problem editing experiences to also be powered by new frontend technologies, making improvements along the way to how educators author these critical content blocks. Next up is our effort to centralize educator settings 
um, for course applications in Studio. Today, many application settings are buried in advanced settings or in other areas of the educator experience, and adding integrations can be cumbersome. So what we're seeing here is a mock-up of a new applications and resources view within the course authoring experience built into that new uh, micro front end. For some of these applications, we can now explore providing integration options as demonstrated here for the discussion app category. So this is a preview of several LTI integrations for discussions and a pattern that could be extended in the future to notes, proctoring, live video streaming, textbooks, and more. So for each app category, we're also hoping to expose platform settings so that integrations can provide deeper support for key platform features like cohorts or enrollment track. In this discussion example, these settings are for the core edX discussion experience, but we do hope that in the future LTI integrations might be able to respond or use these settings in the future. As an example of this, if third-party tools are able to understand the course structure, they would be able to deliver similar in-context discussion. Um, even through the third-party experience. So finally, this, this effort is currently focused on supporting course app configuration, but we do believe this pattern can be extended to program and platform level app configurations in the future. So a common theme you'll see here is, is reliance where possible on LTI specifications as well, helping simplify uh, the addition of new integrations. So next, this takes us to our final theme. Um, our platform was built initially with scale as a, a, a key assumption up front. So MOOCs, or Massive Open Online Courses, were the initial set of courses that we were built to offer. And over time, the platform has been used for a wide range of learning contexts, increasingly being used to deliver smaller online courses, credit-bearing courses, including full online degrees. So the course operation needs of these smaller courses vary from the needs of large courses and represent a key opportunity for us to explore. So each of these tools below is a key area of our instructor dashboard, the tools that instructors use to operate and manage their courses. So many of these tools would benefit from being updated to consider the wide range of course needs, helping course operations scale even for larger high quality courses. These are a number of the examples, uh, projects that we've considered exploring or have actively doing de been doing development on uh, with regards to course operations. So there's a number of ways that we hope that this could be easily extensible in the future. While we don't yet have a micro front end for the instructor dashboard to modernize this, we're hopeful that's something we could explore in the future uh, in addition to some of these other projects. Thank you for your attention today as we zoom through some teaching and learning themes that could likely each fill a presentation of their own. So we're hopeful that, as we mentioned before, that this is the start of an active community conversation around potential contributions and platform extensions. Next up, I think we have some time for questions as well.